is it possible to be so good that it's bad? <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> to be to be so good, like at a level of goodness where, of course, we're all fighting to get there, right? Like we all want to get there. I know you want to get there because you're listening to content like this every day. You know, you follow channels like Ad Sales Remastered to get the upper hand and get that get that slight advantage that, that gives you, you know, that that momentum that you need in the day, right? And and I get it because I'm like that too. We're wired exactly the same. Like we're on the same mission to get real, real good. But is it possible to get so good it's bad? Because I believe, like I was just thinking about this right now in the sauna, I believe that there's a good dangerous. <laughs> Weird, right? It's, it's like one of those, one of those ironies. And you know, um, I don't know the word of it for right now. <laughs> like, if you know the word I'm looking for, like a, a good, a good dangerous, right? Like, what do you call that? Conundrum? An irony? What? What is that? A pundit? I don't. Need, you know, help me out. Comment below and let me know what word I'm looking for. But what I'm getting at though is like there. Since there's a, in my perception, the way I believe, you can get so good you become dangerous. Where, well, could you be? Could you get so good like you become bad? Like it's actually counterproductive. And so. I'm going to share with you real life experiences right now that I'm observing and I'm going to tell you from my own personal point of view and I'm seeing it. I see it on my team. I see it on my sales floor. And now that I think of it, I've seen it coming up in sales. I've seen it throughout the years and it's just this repetitive motion. And it's so common that I believe that you are experiencing it too. So stick around, watch the whole video. Let me know if you relate, comment below. And more importantly, if this is your first time visiting the channel, if you like the content here and you enjoy this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that little bell so that you're alerted for any uh, topics that I upload. And I'm, I'm getting back to the routine of going daily. And sometimes you just need like that, that piece of information. Like if you're going to work right now and you're listening to punk rock or, or hip hop or you know you're listening to like R&B and slow jams in my opinion I don't think that's giving you the ultimate advantage you know I know that you got to get in a specific mindset to get in sales or get motivated for the day and what I have found is that you know for those who have been following the channel including myself like I you know I'll, I'll, I'll listen to some actual brain food some hustle nutrition to get me started in the day because it gets my mind working and it gets my creative um, uh, thought sparking right so I hope to do the same for you but in this episode we're gonna talk about a good bad and a good dangerous how to get so good where it's actually dangerous <laughs> stick around Getting back to the gym, man. It's no joke. For the last couple of weeks, I've taken some time off. You know, I've given my body some rest. I've actually slept in. Um, I haven't been sticking to my diet, my nutrition, so I put on a couple pounds. And I'm getting back to the routine. I'm getting back to the flow. And I think it's important for you to, you know, take a break. You know, relax. If you guys notice, I haven't really even been uploading as much as I as I have been. Uh, before and it's it's really good to take a break and, and kind of slow down take a minute to assess the situation and You know today. I was actually doing that. I was thinking about just as I had mentioned of uh, of How can I help the audience become so good that you become dangerous? Like is there even such a thing like there, is there a good dangerous? <laughs> like is there a good safe danger? Right, and if you know again, if you know what the word is, I, I want to say I irony or ironic, but man, it's on the tip of my tongue. So comment below. Let me know what word I'm looking for, and uh, maybe I'll hook you up with something. But with regards to the topic of this video, you know, I think that there is a good danger, at least in my opinion. But I also thought about being so, you know, getting to a level of being so good where you're actually bad. <laughs> it's bad for you. And I want to share with you my experience and why I'm bringing up this topic is because, you know, I have I have a team of top producers. I am fortunate and blessed to be the the team lead, the manager, sales manager, whatever you want to call it. Just spell my name right on the check <laughs> that I get to hustle alongside with. I don't say I lead them because in all honesty, we lead each other. We motivate each other. We are there to pick up each other. And I lean on them for support. They lean on me for support. And if, if, you know, if we can all climb, we're not leaving anyone behind. Anyway, what I noticed, and I, I actually noticed for years now, is that you can work your absolute hardest to become good at what you do. Every single day you can study a craft, you can put in more hours, you can 
be the first one to come to the office. You could be the last one to leave. And what I have found is that is that repetition, of course, is key. And at some point, you're going to become so good. You know, we want to become so good that we can become dangerous. Now, before I go on into that level, and I'm going to explain what that level looks like and what it feels like, and I'm more importantly, I'm going to share with you how to get there. But I want to explain that that there is actually a level of goodness where it's counterproductive. It actually, it it's it's actually bad. <laughs> and so, in this particular scenario, you know. As a lender, and for those of you who work at a lender, and you don't necessarily need to work for a mortgage lender, your company could have the same qualities or the same characteristics, or you might be able to relate uh, in, in this particular situation, but maybe something just slightly different. But as a lender, we have you know specific niche products or maybe less guidelines or more leniency when it comes to particular characteristics of a prospect. And so let me give you an example. Like we we don't necessarily, you know, have a minimum threshold on our credit score of 620. Some some lenders out there, some of you guys work for companies that work for, you know, you got to have a minimum of 640, 660. I've seen some at 680. Like, mm, <laughs> mm. and so my company, we actually go down. I mean, there we have some programs that have no FICO limit. Like as long as we get an AUS approval, AUS is Automated Underwriting System. That's the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac you know, AUS system that you run your files through. And, you know, if, if, if that gives it okay, we're good to go. So anyway, we got that, that type of leniency, right? We got that kind of pool. <laughs> and so, but there are just some that you just can't do. And now I want you to understand when you have this opportunity or when you have that advantage, because it is an advantage, you have somewhat of a handicap meaning that you could touch a pocket of people in the market that most of our competitors or your competitors simply can't touch. And so we have this advantage to entertain that, right? Well, if you knew your game, if you knew your product and you knew kind of like your boundaries, right? You knew where you could go, where you couldn't go, or at least had a good idea of it, then you're going to keep an eye out for those products because you know you can entertain it and you know you definitely want to capture as much business especially in today's market because the market is you know it is where it is and you got to get creative right and so it, is it possible where you could be so good and know your guidelines so good and know your program so well that it's actually bad for you because it puts you in this track where you're chasing wood meaning you're actually attracting wood <laughs> Because now, mind you, the wood. When I say wood, I'm talking about I'm talking about the the Joe Schmo that has been applying. And no offense to the prospects, but at the end of the day, business is business, right? Like you're not going to be spending an hour and a half talking to someone who you simply cannot help. I would advise you not to do that because if you're like me, and and I believe we are alike, we. We don't work for the hourly. I'm not at my place for our salary. I'm not there for the hourly wage. I'm not trying to buy my next boat off of OT boo boo. What I believe we're trying to do is we're there for the compensation. That's the whole, at least in my opinion, <laughs> that's one of the whole primary motives of sticking our 10, 12 hour days, sacrificing our weekends, is we see the upside with the earning potential. And so I digress. Well, when you come across a prospect who has, let's say, a 560 FICO, they need cash out, they're laid on every single debt but their mortgage, but you might get like a hint that they're interested. Well, of course they're interested, boo-boo. No one's talking to them. No one. Once they hear, boom, five, the, the FICO, what's your FICO score? Five, click. <laughs> like, like, or not, maybe not click, not be that rude, but at the, but immediately you start muting that person out, right? Like you start thinking, okay, well, let me go ahead and <laughs> discharge from this phone conversation and be on my way. This is what we think inside, right? Like we start already planning our, our exit plan. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go send you my information. I'll check back in with you like 12 months. And your brain starts thinking of what you need to do next or the appointment that you have next or is it you know can I go on break or can I fit in a, a, a bite of my lunch because you're eating at your desk and so this is the environment that we're in 
and if you but let's say if you're able to touch people or or, or entertain and, and help people with that low of a fico then you start digging a little further and say okay well 500 fine I, I you know i'm one of the few that can actually entertain a conversation like this so let me ask you some more well what do you need cash out debt consolidation of course they need debt consolidation boo boo their fico is at is at negative five what do you think is holding it down it ain't their looks Right. And so anyway, so you so you dig in even further, like, aha, I got them. Right. Because, you know, we're in the market where we need we need the interest for cash out. Ain't no one doing rate and term refinancing. Right. Anyway, fast forward. So you find out all the qualities and, you know, you you get a hint that that they might be interested. Well, of course, they're interested. But you're so good because you 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 talk so well and you're kind of you're so good. You're actually used to attracting <laughs> The, uh, the interest, right? Because you're it's autopilot. When you become so good and you repeat something so often, it just becomes like clockwork. And so sometimes, it, you know, you could, like for example, when you, like you could probably multitask, right? Like when you're on the phone, you're talking to someone, you could probably read an email, reply back to an email, do it all in one shot. You could probably run AUS, pull credit, scrub credit, do it all in one shot. Why? It's because you've been doing it for a while. But if you think back for your very first day on the job, you probably weren't able to do that. The very first time you use your loan origination system, you probably weren't able to do that. But now you can, right? Like you know all the shortcuts, you know all the tab, tab, tabs, right? Right? You know everything about the system, and so you become very fluent, and so you can multitask. But at the same time, when you when you're doing these things and your and your actions are somewhat on autopilot, is it possible to become so good at what you do where you're you're just on auto mode, right? Meaning that you're just kind of going through the process, and 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 what happens in my view, or at least what I've experienced, is that you can become so good that you're actually bad for yourself because what happens is you're 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 filling in your pipeline because you're so good and you're actually attracting all the people that no other lender will talk to and so they're giving you these actions they're responding they're giving you the responses they're giving you the time they're sending the docs real quick you're locking up the deals you're putting them in the pipeline and then ultimately what you find out is that is that your your process has been so automated that you've filled your pipeline up with wood right not only that, but but the, those who didn't make make it into the pipeline are actually those wood other wood files who just simply aren't even messing with you. And so my point of the day is, and my 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 I guess my resolution for you is that you can become so good and so automated in the process that you forget to pay attention. You forget that that there is a formula to follow. And it's important to observe and pay attention to your actions because if you do not, then you're simply going to dig yourself into a hole. That's when you become so good that you're actually bad for yourself. So pay attention to your pipeline. Pay attention to your actions. Pay attention to who you're giving your time. Are you chasing the wood? Are you spending hours and hours on a file and then realizing like, man, I should have never given that person the time of day. I should have never given that much that much time. But then what happens? You justify it. You justify it because, well, it's the market. We got it. You know, I'm not going to let any business slip through my fingers. I'm not going to let any of the business slip through me. Right. And this is how we justify it. And so if we justify it, then we don't resolve the actual true original problem. And then we continue committing that same mistake. And so observe today, observe. Now, I promise you that I would tell you how to become so good that you become dangerous. And this is how you, you know that you're so good, you become dangerous. Like the qualities that I just explained, minus out all the bad parts. Like you're just so, it's so automated. You know the exact words to say. You already know the objections coming up before they even come up. So you're actually addressing them in your conversation. And you have this tonality and this rhythm that actually attracts, regardless if it's wood. You could track the, the prime client, the person with a 3.5 I got five clients in my pipeline right now who had a 3.25. How am I how am I working with them? How am I putting them into the high fours, some even at 5%? How? And and, and like can you imagine where where you can be so good that you become so dangerous that people call you with a three and a quarter percent, tell you to your face that they want a lower rate, 
tell you to your face that they don't want cash out, but they end up signing with you to pay cash out. Tell you to your face they don't want to pay fees, but they end up buying points. <laughs> so not only are they paying for fees, but they're actually paying down the interest rate. They're buying it down. Can you imagine being so good that you become that dangerous where you understand this formula that it just works like clockwork, but more importantly, you're able to pick up the subtle clues where if you're dealing with wood, you know exactly how to sway them to the left. And so you proceed and, and find and attract and market and network and get these referrals that consistently feeds your pipeline. Do you want to know how to become so good you become dangerous? Click the link below at salesremastered.com. It's, it's a Sales Remastered University. Look at Formula to Six Figures. It's called Banker's Formula to Six Figures. That, that course will teach you how to become so good you will become dangerous. This is what I do. This is why my team is the number one team in the company. Is because this is all I do. I teach loan officers how to be the absolute best. I, I not only teach you the wordplay, but I teach you the techniques and the rhythm and the tonality and the practice and the habits and the, the, the lessons that are within this course will help you skyrocket, will shed years off of your climb, will fast track you regardless if you're seasoned, brand new, intermediate, whatever your, your level of experience is, the banker's formula to six figures is your ticket to the top. If you want to stay paid, if you want to make the income you're earning, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, then the banker's formula to six figures is for you. And if you're if you're stretched on money right now, use a credit card, boo boo. Like, man, you know what I mean? Like, not only will it pay for itself, but it pays for itself again and again and again and again. So check out the testimonials, salesremaster.com. It's the second program. And if you haven't by now already, check out all my other links below and say hello to me there. I appreciate you for the time and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Let me show you everything I know A jungle slide